How are y'all doing? I'm going to read to you um, the first two chapters of Ramey Nightingale, which is a story that takes place in uh, central Florida in uh, the mid-70s. And I grew up in central Florida in the mid-70s. Um, and if you have any questions about this book, you get to ask them later. So without further ado, chapter one. There were three of them. Three girls, they were standing side by side, they were standing at attention. And then the girl in the pink dress, the one who was standing right next to Ramey, let out a sob and said, the more I think about it, the more terrified I am, I'm too terrified to go on. The girl clutched her baton to her chest and dropped to her knees. Ramey stared at her in wonder and admiration. She herself often felt too terrified to go on but she had never admitted it out loud. The girl in the pink dress moaned and toppled over sideways. Her eyes fluttered closed. She was silent, and then she opened her eyes very wide and shouted, Archie, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I betrayed you. She closed her eyes again. Her mouth fell open. Ramey had never seen or heard anything like it. I'm sorry, Ramey whispered. I betrayed you. For some reason, the words seemed worth repeating. Stop this nonsense immediately, said Ida Nee. Ida Nee was the baton twirling instructor. Even though she was old, over 50 at least, her hair was an extremely bright yellow. She wore white boots that came all the way up to her knees. I'm not kidding, said Ida Nee. Ramey believed her. Ida Nee didn't seem like much of a kidder. The sun was way, way up in the sky, and the whole thing was like high noon in a western, but it was not a western. It was baton twirling lessons at Ida Nee's house in Ida Nee's backyard. It was the summer of 1975. It was the fifth day of June, and two days before, on the third day of June, Ramey Clark's father had run away from home with a woman who was a dental hygienist. Hey, diddle, diddle, the dish ran away with the spoon. Those were the words that went through Ramey's head every time she thought about her father and the dental hygienist. But she did not say the words out loud anymore because Ramey's mother was very upset. And talking about dishes and spoons running away together was not appropriate. It was actually a great tragedy what had happened. That was what Ramey's mother said. This is a great tragedy, said Ramey's mother, quit reciting nursery rhymes. It was a great tragedy because Ramey's father had disgraced himself. It was also a great tragedy because Ramey was now fatherless. The thought of that, the fact of it, that she, Ramey Clark, was without a father, made a small, sharp pain shoot through Ramey's heart every time she considered it. Sometimes the pain in her heart made her feel too terrified to go on. Sometimes it made her want to drop to her knees. But then she would remember that she had a plan. Chapter 2. Get up, said Ida Nee to the girl in the pink dress. She fainted, said the other baton twirling student, a girl named Beverly Topinski, whose father was a cop. Ramey knew the girl's name and what her father did because Beverly had made an announcement at the beginning of the lesson. She had stared straight ahead, not looking at anybody in particular, and said, my name is Beverly Topinski and my father's a cop, so I don't think you should mess with me. Ramey, for one, had no intention of messing with her. I've seen a lot of people faint, said Beverly now. That's what happens when you're the daughter of a cop. You see everything. You see it all. Shut up, Topinski, said Ida Nee. The sun was very high in the sky. It hadn't moved. It seemed like someone had stuck it up there and then walked away and left it. I'm sorry, whispered Ramey. I betrayed you. Beverly Topinski knelt down and put her hands on either side of the fainting girl's face. What do you think you're doing, said Ida Nee. The pine trees above them swayed back and forth. The lake, Lake Clara, where someone named Clara Wingtip had managed to drown herself a hundred years ago, gleamed and glittered. The lake looked hungry. Maybe it was hoping for another Clara Wingtip. Ramey felt a wave of despair. There wasn't time for people fainting. She had to learn how to twirl a baton, and she had to learn fast, because if she learned how to twirl a baton, then she stood a good chance of becoming Little Miss Central Florida Tire. And if she became Little Miss Central Florida Tire, her father would see her picture in the paper and come home. 
That was Ramey's plan. Thank you.